continuing to trash talk the fighter and his family. Moving on, let's talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, Pittsburgh Steelers center Marquise Pouncey and Miami Dolphins center Mike Pouncey both had critical comments about a former teammate and initial reports uh, it were, it was about Mike Wallace. Let's listen. In my opinion, he's a coward. I never want a guy on my team like that, man, to walk out on your band of brothers. Forget the things that don't happen in the game. Say if you don't get the ball a lot or you mess up and they pull you out. Forget all that, bro. It's about playing for your brothers, man. It's going out there every single day. You're playing with them guys. You're not that out there playing with management or, or the coaches, per se. I mean, in a way you are, but in a way it's more important to play for your brothers, man. And I think that when you walk away from something like that, you, you just walk away from a friendship, the family that you built with everybody there. And uh, for me personally, I wouldn't want nobody on my team like that. Uh, but Mike Wallace tweeted the following, Mike Marquise are my little brothers, man. Mar Marquise was speaking on a general situation, not my situation. Media can do whatever they want. Well, Marquise followed it up with a post on Instagram. In the post, he added a picture of his words. The transcription there, as you can see, he's denying that he was referring to Mike Wallace, though he's referencing a known incident. Wallace uh, not checking back into the game. So again, he's trying to say that he didn't say it. That's why Marshawn Lynch doesn't speak to the media that much. Stephen A., your take on all of this? Well, my take on it is that, <clears throat> first of all, when I first saw the Pouncey brothers saying what they said, I applauded them for their candor, uh, their willingness to speak up and to speak about the importance of teams. Uh, regardless of what mistakes people may have felt they've made in the past, these guys are to be respected. They're both two centers in the National Football League that are pretty damn good at what they do, and they're men. And I want to give them their respect where their respect is due. I don't want to disrespect Mike Wallace, uh, you know, Mike Wallace as, as, as a man, uh, but as a football player, he can play. But he appears to be an individual that got his money and then stopped putting in the work because the level of production that you would expect from him that you saw from him in Pittsburgh, you haven't seen from him since he's gotten to Miami. That's just a fact, and that's problematic. And, you know, when you look at it from that perspective, Mike Wallace, a couple of years ago, Skip, before he went to Miami, before he went to Miami, I mean, he was a stud in Pittsburgh, and people had mad respect for him, his game, his skill, his level of production, etc. And then he went to Miami, and we're like, where are you? You haven't done anything. And then the whole incognito situation, when you heard some of the, th the things that was going on in that locker room, it made you lose respect for a few of those brothers inside that locker room who labeled Richie Incognito an honorary brother um, and, and, and didn't feel that way about Martin because he was mild-mannered with an education from Stanford and all of that stuff. Don't even get me started with that. But in the end, we're looking at it from that perspective, heard what the Pouncey brothers said, said it made sense, had the report saying this is what they were talking about, and that was that. And then the second, you know, the stuff hits the fan, here we go pointing the finger at the media. The media makes up everything. <laughs> it just amazes me, man, how guys want to say what they want to say, but then don't want to be held accountable for it because the heat gets turned up, and all of a sudden it's the media's fault. The media asked you a question. They quoted you on your answer, but when it's deciphered, it's their fault. I, I don't get that. And it just seems to me to be incredibly, incredibly weak. And to, to you know, for people to bring up that, well, you know, we could go the route uh, of Marshawn Lynch. Marshawn Lynch personalized it. You had Super Bowl week and people, they ain't asking you about your mama or your family or, or your personal life. They're trying to ask you about the New England Patriots. You're paid to play football, and part of your contract is to talk about football. So to me, I repeat what I said before, he should have been fined for, for, for acting the way that he acted during Super Bowl week. I think the NFL made an egregious error in not fining him, but I still respect the hell out of Marshawn Lynch. At least he's man enough at least not to say something or to stand up for what he says, which doesn't appear to be the case with the Pouncey brothers right now in light of their backtracking. And don't even get me started with Mike Wallace. Could you have a thousand yard receiving uh, receiving season, please? Could you catch a few more touchdowns, please? Could you could you earn the sixty million dollars, please? It will it really would be nice. Thank you very much. It really would. I know he's not on Miami anymore, by the way. I know yeah. he's going to Minnesota. Yeah, but yeah. you know what I'm saying. Okay. I, I hear what you just said, but to me, from a distance, I thought what the Pounceys did was a little out of bounds. You talked about low blow in our first topic. I thought it was a little bit of a low blow. 
Now, what I don't know is, is there something personal between the Pounceys and Mike Wallace that was going on behind the scenes? I don't know. Maybe there's some other bad blood I'm not aware of. So if there is, forgive me. But look, is Mike Wallace a tough guy that you'd want in your foxhole in a tough game? No, not. Is he more of a me guy than a we guy? Yeah, he's more of a me guy. But Stephen A., has he been a very productive wide receiver in the National Football League for four years in Pittsburgh and even in his two years in Miami? I say yes. And just a quick point of order, and I'm not trying to shoot you down on this, but I look at the numbers last year that he put up for the Dolphins, and that's with his, the last game, which we're about to talk about, which was the controversial one in which he caught zero passes. But his numbers last year in Miami were actually slightly better than the ones in his last year in Pittsburgh. I could go through blow by blow, but seriously, yep. they stack up. I can make a case that last year was a little better. Now to that last game. Remember this? It was the woeful New York Jets at the Dolphins. The Jets were 3-12 and 12 going into the game. The Dolphins were 8-7 and seven and had a chance to finish 9-7. and seven. I don't know what was going on, game plans, psychology, what, whatever was going on in the head of Mike Wallace, but he was targeted one time in the first half on the first series, and he caught zero balls. Then there were conflicting reports. Did he sort of opt out in the second half, or was he benched? After the game, Philbin, Coach Philbin said he was benched. Did he refuse to go back in? Mike Wallace, through spokespeople, said no, he didn't refuse to go back in. So I'm not sure how you could dismiss him as a coward. The, who, who ran out on his band of brothers. I, I don't know exactly what that means. I'm not sure how to interpret that. But again, is he a tough guy? No, he's not a tough guy. But will he be productive going forward with the Minnesota Vikings? I will bet you'll be pretty productive. Do you want him in your locker room, in your foxhole? Maybe not. But, but don't call him a coward because I'm not sure he qualifies as a coward. I don't know, but the, the point is you're not sure, neither am I. Okay. And I'm not saying I believe that. I'm saying what I applaud is if you feel something as a teammate, I, I respect the fact that you stood up on camera and said how you felt as opposed to hiding behind mm -hmm. folks, anonymous quotes, sure. leaking stuff. Okay. That's all I meant by that. I don't know him. I'm not going to sit there and disrespect Mike Wallace by, by character assassinating him. I don't know this brother from a can of paint. I'm not going to do that to him. I'm going to look at his numbers. I'm going to look at the fact that 862 yards on 67 receptions this past season. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm like, look, I need more than that from you if I'm giving you $60 million. Okay. And you're my number one receiver. That's all I'm saying. He's been in the league for six years. He's got two thousand plus yard seasons in his career the other four not so much four of those years was in pittsburgh with big ben roethlisberger as his quarterback and he still didn't catch a for a thousand yards two of those four seasons i'm just looking at the numbers that he garnered the dollars that he took the position that he's playing as a number one wide out and i'm like are you number one material the numbers tell me no now the numbers could be lying to some degree but not totally so I'm looking at it from that perspective. Also, when you're getting paid that type of money, they're not paying you just for your skill set. They're paying you to be a leader. I think about the Richie Incognito bullying scandal. Mm. I think about the last game with the Jets. I think about the stuff in between where clearly there was some friction between him, whether it be Philbin, his offensive coordinator, or Ryan. I don't know. But something is awry. Yeah. And when you're the number one guy, that kind of stuff can't happen. It's not just about numbers it's about how you conduct yourself to assist in galvanizing troops around you wearing the same uniform so all of y'all can go out and being committed to being the very best that you can be can we sit here and say that mike wallace has done that absolutely not okay we cannot say that uh, now, that uh, might not be his fault all right but we again, can't say that not to overly defend mike wallace but again his first year with the dolphins for all that money he did catch 73 balls, which I think was more than any year I see that he caught in Pittsburgh. That's and, right. And last year, without any production in the final game, so it was only, you know, sort of 15-game production, he did catch 10 touchdown passes, which was as many as he caught in his best year in Pittsburgh. And remember yep. this. Mm -hmm. Roethlisberger's throwing to him in Pittsburgh, and they are bombs away. And, you know, I'm not the biggest Ryan Tannehill fan. 
He, maybe he was a little bit of a victim of some misfires from Ryan Tannehill. So let's not scapegoat Mike Wallace as the reason the Dolphins haven't been very good for the last two well, years. Well, I'm not saying he's the reason in terms of his talent, because obviously if you're a receiver, Skip, and a quarterback can't get you the ball, that's a problem. I do understand that. But if you have teammates speaking out against you, if you've got the yeah. whole bullying scandal that regressed and really put a black mark on the franchise and the league to some degree, and then you've got folks talking about how you quit on the team, whether that be accurate or not, clearly you haven't done a good enough job in terms of ingratiating yourself with your fellow teammates inside that locker room. And I'm saying to you, if that's the reality, you're not earning your money. All of, it's not just about catching touchdowns. It's not, you, you know, you got to have numbers. That's true. But you also have to have the ability to be a leader. It's almost like what we say about superstars in, box, in basketball, Skip. There are dudes that can play. And then there are dudes who are box office. The dudes who are box office are the ones who deserve the money. The ones who are not deserve their fair share, but they don't deserve the money. Part of being the guy is not just elite results, but also making sure that you're the face of a franchise. Mike, Willa, Mike Wallace signed for $60 million. I'm sorry. I don't see $60 million production. Okay, but he didn't. I just don't. Remember, he didn't give himself $60 million. They gave <laughs> I agree. It to him. He didn't. This is their agree. choice. I think. I agree. I and, I'm say, and I'm saying, and say I'm saying to you, $60 and I'm saying yeah. to you, it doesn't look like a wise investment. Okay. All right, we leave it there, gentlemen. Let's talk about the NBA. The first time in NBA history, a team with a sub 200 win percentage of at least 60 games beat the defending champions. That's just a stat, one stat of many disturbing stats. Knicks over Spurs. And one angry coach. Stay tuned. We'll be right back in just a few moments.